entrar usted en esta iglesia o en esta iglesia. Αυτό το οποίο μα μένει από την εξήγηση τη Πατρίτσια Άουτερ Πάιντε είναι ότι πόσε πολλέ διαφορετικέ εκλογέ υπάρχουν και πώ αλλάζουν τα δεδομένα. Δηλαδή, ακόμη και τα public media τα οποία αναφέρονται στην Αμερική, πόσο διαφορετικά είναι από τα δικά μα και πώ τα κατανοούμε. Δηλαδή, εμά τα δημόσια μέσα, τα δημόσια μέσα, νοούμε κρατικά για παράδειγμα. Είναι εντελώ διαφορετικά τα πράγματα. Ο, ε, ο Μάθιου α, Μακάλιστερ, εκτό από προσωπικό φίλο, είναι καθηγητή στο τμήμα επικοινωνία του Πανεπιστημίου τη ε, Πολιτιακού Πανεπιστημίου τη Πενσιλβάνια και η έρευνα του περιλαμβάνει την κριτική τη διατήρηση, τη σπορτ κουλτούρα, την πολιτική οικονομία του μέσου μαζική ενημέρωση ε, και του ζητήσαμε να μιλήσει για τι αλλαγέ που συγκεντρώνται στη σχέση ανάμεσα στη διατήρηση Thanks, thank you so much. And uh, thanks everyone, it's really great. Is the weather usually like this here? Well, it's great, nice. Uh, so I might, um, uh, bearing in mind what uh, both uh, Eric and Pat have talked about, I, I might present a little bit more of a cautionary tale about new media, although again recognizing um, the, the great points that have been made uh, before this. And specifically, I want to talk about how advertising uh, is reacting to a new media environment, and at least some things that they're trying to do that certainly we can see as good for them as marketers, but may not be the best thing for us who wants a vibrant democracy. So those will be some of the issues uh, that I'll be addressing here. And of course, what we see now is a uh, really a very um, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a time where there's a lot of changes going on in how media is funded and how advertising is conducted. So for example, uh, in fact, this is a report that came out last week uh, from a, um, uh, an advertising agency subsidiary called Carrot, which does uh, media research. And they, they did projections for what they see as where advertising revenues are going to be spent in traditional media, what's called measured media, uh, in 2010. And of course, you know, we're in a uh, global recession and, and things don't look so great. Uh, and you know, these projections change uh, at least quarterly, if not more often than that. Uh, but what we see here is that traditional media are, are not growing as quickly as uh, the uh, average growth, which in 2010 they expect to be about 1%. Television is, especially because of things like cable and uh, satellite television, but you see that the print media are not doing so well. Uh, newspapers had a really rough year globally and in the United States uh, in 2008 and 2009, where it was double digit losses in advertising revenue. You see that uh, television is going to encompass about 44% uh, of the global advertising pie, the global advertising revenue total. Television about 20%, or, uh, um, newspapers about 20%, magazines about 11%. But obviously the, the big news here is that online advertising revenue uh, is number four at 10%. And of course, what I've circled in read there is that growth rate that is in a, in a time of recession, uh, the uh, placing advertising on the internet, online advertising, banner ads and things like that mostly is what this figure encompasses. So there's a lot more going on in marketing besides that, but just that one measure, that online advertising is where advertisers are starting to put their revenue. Uh, and so what we see is then pretty soon, uh, on, well, right now, online is already ahead of traditional media like radio, and that within another year or two, online media will be number, thir number three, and, and of course number two is a media that's hurting globally in terms of its attractiveness to advertisers' newspapers. And it's been alluded to, especially by Patricia, you know, how media are funded has significant implications for what those media do and the democratic vibrancy of those media. Now, other media may come in and help to take their place, as both Patricia and Eric have talked about, but nevertheless, we are seeing a shift in where advertising is putting their money. And if you assume that one function of advertising 
is to fund our media systems to be a major source of our media systems, then changes in where advertising is placing that revenue, of course for their own ends, you know, they, they're not concerned about you know, funding media as much as getting their um, marketing word out, but nevertheless their decisions about where to place that money has implications for how our mediated democracy function. So uh, the switch from a traditional media advertising revenue stream to an online revenue stream is much more than just advertising shifting from one medium to another, right? It's not just that one medium wins and one medium loses, but the philosophy of online advertising revenue and how online advertising revenue is manifested, that is how it actually works, is creating a profound shift in the mechanisms of advertising funding toward media, how media measure that, and really how media think of themselves. The, the, the self-concept of media is shifting with these uh, online um, advertising revenues that are getting enhanced. So when you look at traditionally, how does, um, what's the philosophy of placing advertising revenue in media, the traditional model emphasize certain things, and of course these are averages, this is aggregated, what I'm saying here, there's always exception, there's always uh, unusual things going on, but in the traditional model, putting, you know, t advertising on television or in newspapers or in magazines, generally what you're, what you're trying to do is reach audiences with the same basic ads. You put an ad on during a nationwide broadcast or even a global wide broadcast, and everybody in the country, everybody in a um, particular, uh, even globally, or particular community sees that ad. So it's a mass appeal ad. Generally, individual audience members are anonymous. That is, advertisers might have aggregate data about who is watching that ad, or even more exactly, who is watching the program, or who is re reading the newspaper that that ad is connected to. Right? But, but they didn't traditionally know who specifically was watching a particular ad, even, even something like movies, when you buy a ticket, you generally don't have to show identification when you buy a movie ticket, right, a movie theater ticket. So we're anonymous as individuals, traditionally, in media. That again, with significant exceptions, uh, there's a separation between the ads, the media content that may be next to those ads, but still separate from those ads, and where people can buy things. That is, you cannot buy things in a newspaper when you buy the newspaper. You could not buy something while you were watching traditional television, right? The retail space, the opportunity to purchase, was separate from the ad and in turn separate from the media content. Um, for the most part, advertising came in delineated form. That is, the 30-second television spot, the one-page magazine ad, the half-page newspaper ad, the 30-second radio commercial, right? So they were contained, they were self-defined promotional textual types uh, that were easy to spot. Again, there are significant exceptions to that. Um, for the most part, in traditional media, ad measurements are based on exposure estimates. That is, uh, what traditional advertisers and media would use, and, and companies like Nielsen would facilitate this, is something like cost per mill which stands for cost per thousand, how much does it cost for an ad to reach a thousand people, but that would be often based on measurements of how many people are watching a TV show, how many people are buying the newspaper, how many people are buying the magazine, how many people are listening to a radio station at that time. It's not a measure even of how many people were watching that commercial, because as Eric alluded to, generally people don't like commercials, we avoid them, we go to the bathroom when a broadcast TV commercial comes on, uh, and we may even know where the nearest bathroom is, according to uh, the app that Eric showed us. Um, if we're, of course, we're at home, I hope we know. Um, that, uh, so we have this kind of very broad measurement, estimate, really, of who's being exposed to a particular TV show. Uh, advertising tends to, uh, by default, it's not their purpose to do this, but by default, advertising tended to fund or subsidize media content creation. So that when you, when a company like